to suck out any small debris of the tumor thrombus? Uh, no. We, we, one, one can get a good exposure, open it up and one can flush it. One can use, uh, use normal saline for flushing, etc., etc. There are no blind areas. There are no blind areas. So you don't need to use a Fogarty or a Foley's catheter for that. Even preoperative embolization. Preoperative embolization, yes, for left-sided tumors, if you cannot approach the artery early. But for right-sided tumors, practically never. For left-sided tumors, you can look at the CT scan, and if you feel that there is a bunch of collaterals surrounding the vein, surrounding the artery, and you may not be able to reach the artery early, then in that situation, it is a good idea to embolize. And what we do is we embolize on the morning rather than one day before, because then the patient does not have that tumor embolization syndrome. And but then one has to talk to the radiologist and be very certain what what is the exact agent they are going to use, because once what happened was we asked them to embolize, they so-called embolize, and on the table we realized that everything was bloody, and we reached the artery in the end, and then we realized the artery was pulsating, and then late, then we talked to the radiologist, he said, I was too scared, because they, whatever I was putting in, it was getting uh, flushed away. So, that also one has, one will have to talk to the radiologist, and, dis, and discuss, and what particular agent that person is going to use, and how that particular patient's artery is going to get embolized. Dr. Seth? Yes. Yeah, here, sir. Yes. So, where have you found, uh, if you have used veno-venous bypass helpful in level 3? We have not used veno-venous bypass. We have not used it. But it has been described in the literature. But we do, we do full cardiopulmonary bypass rather than veno-venous bypass. And, sir, usefulness of TE, transesophageal echo? Yes, it is quite useful. It is quite useful. One can see the exact upper level. One can see where it is in the atrium. And before opening up the atrium and before opening up uh, the IVC, one gets a complete mental picture what is the exact anatomy of that thrombus in that particular patient. TE is available in a cardiac uh, surgery OT and it is being used as a routine. Yeah. And sometime uh, while taking the thrombus out, uh, certain feels that part of the thrombus is there or wall of the IVC was involved, then how to, you know, handle that situation? The part of the IVC which is invaded has to be excised. And if the lumen comes down to even one third, that is acceptable. But if it is very narrow, then one has to use a patch of the pericardium. We have replaced the IVC with a Dacron, uh, patch. With a Dacron tube also. Uh, but the problem with all these synthetic tubes is that they, they thrombose uh, uh, they get occluded within about six months, but six months is also good enough time for collaterals to form. If they get occluded slowly, then usually, but we have used these Dacron tubes in patients with IVC tumors rather than IVC thrombi. Tumor thrombi, we have generally been able to excise and get away and reconstruct, but uh, complete replacement has been done in three cases of IVC tumor. Leomyosarcoma of the IVC. Thank you, sir. Yeah, sir, regarding that uh, trans, uh, that uh, transesophageal ultrasound, whatever uh, uh, anesthetists do, they'll put it along with after the tube is put, they'll put it, and it's a continuous monitoring all throughout the procedure because uh, because you never know as we are you are fiddling around, it may just uh, was thrombus might just migrate, so just leave it inside and it is being monitored. Uh, yes, they keep on. Yeah. Yes, they keep on sir, monitoring all the time. Sir, around that regarding the tumor thrombus, you know the spillage, especially on the cardiothoracic, they're not worried about the tumor th spillage. And here also in the abdomen, when you open the IVC and tumor, how often you have seen the bed recurrence due to the spillage? Uh, I don't think it occurs because once, you know, it is very difficult to take the thrombus out intact, although that is what is described in the book. But so many times the thrombus will fragment. And if you, after you have taken out the thrombus and if you have given a good wash and cleaned all the microscopic thing, and then the, the bed, tumor bed, you can leave uh, distilled water for about 10 minutes. We, at least we haven't felt that there has been a recurrence because of the tumor spillage. Yes, patients have had metastasis, patients have died, 
but perhaps not because of tumor spillage. Tumor spillage should lead to a disseminated intraperitoneal uh, 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 recurrence. That is not what has happened. Sir. Uh, Amlesh, sir. Yes. Here, sir. Okay. So, you have uh, shown in large tumors, you have removed the tumor. Yes. And then you have dissected the IVC. Yes. How will you ensure that the tumor will not fly away? You cannot be 100% certain, but you have to use a soft clamp and your manipulation of the IVC has to be minimal at that time. But yes, you are right, we have had two patients amongst these uh, mortalities. Embolism, pulmonary. Embolism, yes. These two patients died on the table because of pulmonary thromboembolism, yes. Sir, sir, do you feel that histopathology of the uh, tumor, uh, you know, uh, they give rise the consistency of the thr thrombus different, like uh, a clear cell will be the solid one, easy to take out, papillary may not be that good, well-formed thrombus? All thrombi, <laughs> actually clear cell is also reasonably friable, it is yellowish. Mm -hmm. And in uh, peanut, peanut also has, peanut has a relatively pinkish, Again, reasonably friable. If the tumor is infiltrating the wall, that is a tumor which will not be friable, but that will have a very poor prognosis because that tumor would be biologically aggressive. Sir, is there any, a, any role of TKI, pre-op TKI? Yes, there are studies which show that if you use TKI, but then the fact is that the response to TKI would be about 50%. So you are taking a 50% chance of tumor progression. And if the patient is borderline operable and you're trying to reduce, bring it to this side of the borderline, there's a 50% chance that the patient may actually go on the other side of the borderline and may not remain operable at all. Then you are going to lose the patient. So if you can operate, even with a high risk, it is better to operate rather than give TKI and hope for a good response. Can I ask Thank you the last question? Yes, please. Yes, please sir. You know, yes. the one that we've done at just look many of these tumors, the cardiac surgeon has always tried to just press the IV thing, so try to remove yes, it, just by pressing. Ultimately, he takes a small sponge on holder without the sponge, There's a thin one with the pediatric one, yes, and he pushes that right through, and then we flush it, and he tries to take out the rest this way. And at the end of the day, there will always be a little bit of bleeding. It's never that there's no bleeding. How would you know that... Uh, what he said was right, each of the endoscopy, but if you don't have that, how do you know that, okay, everything is removed and there is less chance of pulmonary embolism? Actually, we had a patient who died of an embolism after we were sure we ruined every bit of it. So how are you too sure of that? Even your transtitrophysial endoscopy, I mean your ultrasonography, will not be able to see those small things. That was a question. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Just last, sir. Yeah. Uh, wonderful, uh, Dr. Mlees, seeing yeah. you this, uh, doing all this very challenging procedure. Yeah. Uh, my latest experience in uh, Sir Gangaram Hospital yeah. with two patients, uh, there, of course, the uh, liver transplant surgery team is very robust in the cardiac surgery with their help. I found they were using a different technique. They were not opening the IVC right view open in, in the, exactly in the front. Hmm. They rotate the liver towards the left side of the patient completely and open the IVC on the right side. So things were, I found very uh, easy to handle because you are afraid of the, even the lumbar vessel which is posterior to the IVC near the left renal vein. It comes in your view, and suturing is also very easy because you are reflecting the liver on the other side. In, from in front, things are a little different and difficult. So this is just I wanted to share with you that next time you do, probably do, that way you will find a difference. No, no, we also do exactly the same way. If you, in all the videos for the right-sided tumor, we have gone on the right side and made a vena cavotomy on the right side only. But the last video where there were mid uh, vena cavotomy, that was actually a left-sided tumor, where there was a big tumor and left-sided tumor was taken out separately and then the renal vein stump was delivered from left to right and then the vena cavotomy was made in the midline. But for a right-sided tumor, in general, we do extend the renal vein 
and and but that last video was different for right sided tumor in general it is better to make a circumscribing vena cavotomy and extend that to that is what has been shown in the remaining videos thank you sir thank, thank you, you very, very much. much thank you can we go to dr pranjal moti sir toti he is doing some interesting pranjal sir yeah yeah i'm still struggling with the new